Public perception to any politicians should matter. Uh, and the question uh, on this one was, who do you think is the most corrupt individual in yeah. Kenya? Yeah. Uh, do you think that was an unfair question uh, to ask uh, members of the public? Because uh, as, even as a random question, who do you think is the most corrupt person in Kenya? Well, well uh, uh, Fred, uh, probably two things to say. First, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the, the report is, is purely based on perception. Mm -hmm. And, and True. Uh, and it and is and purely public yeah, perception. Perception, and 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 you know the way you 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 perceive uh, something is is a result of of many yeah. aspects, pr probably influence. I mean, you know, if 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 I go around peddling uh, falsehoods about you mm -hmm. and and uh, shape opinion or, or thoughts about you about me by what I'm saying, then uh, I'll create that perception. And, and, and uh, that would not necessarily mean that Fred is corrupt. Yes, I mean, I mean uh, that's so, so, so that, that, that's the first thing. Yes. That there's about perception. Two, and then uh, by nature and the scientific effect of, or the procedure of, of cause, as, as, as you know, although they have been said uh, scientifically to be correct sometimes, I mean, uh, correct in the sense that uh, uh, maybe like when they predict outcome of elections. But in this particular case, you'll be asking yourself, how many people are normally uh, asked this question, for example, to come up with such a report? And you find that sometimes the sampling, the sampling, and that's why I talked about the scientific uh, procedure of, of, of polls. You could go and ask uh, 50 people from a certain area which has a certain kind of influence and then uh, come up with their results based on that. And then the third and most important thing you said is that really uh, you find that uh, the people of focus are politicians. And, and the <coughs> by, by virtue and nature, uh, politicians' names being actively mm -hmm. in circulation, uh, it, it is most likely that they also carry along with them yes. the tag as, as belabored by probably a few. And, and then uh, the, the, last, the, the last question, yeah, the last question then that's what you asked, mm -hmm. one would be asking is uh, who would be persons of interest behind uh, the sponsor of uh, sponsoring of such a, of such a and, uh, and program? And, and this and, story and, and, and then TV the, goes on to list more people than you. just the two who, uh, who appear, mm -hmm. whose names appear on the front page of the Daily Nation. Mm -hmm. Actually, Uru uh, Kenyatta is there. Uh, Uru Kenyatta, even Ryan Odinga is there at 5%. Uh, even Kalozo Musioka has been listed on the same list. But we're asking, is it an unfair question? Is it is it unfair for such a poll to carry out public perception, a poll on public perception, and publicize it? Because yes, it could be potentially damaging to anyone mentioned. A public perception is it is it right to actually gauge public perception and publicize it? Before the post-election violence of 2007, 2008, there was no law on opinion polling in this country. And many of us believed that due to the opinion polls that were made before that election, opinion polling contributed to the violence. So I moved as a member of parliament and uh, drafted a bill and prosecuted it and we created the Public Opinion Polling Act, which is there in this country. That was my brainchild. And in that law, and this Muzungu knows. Mm -hmm. You're talking it, about Tom Wolf. Yes, he knows, he knows very well. He, he was one of the people I was consulting mm -hmm. when I was working on this, uh, this law. He knows very well that for him to make this kind of announcement, he should have started by declaring who commissioned him mm -hmm. and how much he was paid for this. He said that they sponsored uh, the, the poll themselves as Ipsos. He's lying. He's lying because the people of Ipsos, they are in business. They want to make money. They wait, somebody commissions them, they make money, and then they do the job. Because they have to go around the country uh, asking these questions. The second thing, he should have clarified the nature of the questions that he put to the public. Mm -hmm. The third thing, according to the public opinion polling law, he is supposed to tell us who it is he was interviewing. Instead of telling us that, I was looking at it on the online version of this report. He has told us the following, according to Jubilee supporters and according to NASA supporters. Mm -hmm. And when you follow it on those lines, because he was attempting to beat the law, 
when you follow it on that line, you find that the people who are saying that Waiguru and Ruto are the most corrupt are, I think they were 50, 55% NASA mm -hmm. in that report of his. And the ones who are saying that Raila is corrupt and uh, Kalonzi is corrupt are the Jubilee people. Mm -hmm. So, the Wolf should just admit that he was reporting on a case of pigs uh, playing in a game of, I mean competing in a game of playing in the mud. It's mm -hmm. not telling us anything scientific. Well, do you think that this poll could uh, <laughs> potentially damage anyone's political ambitions? Uh, because, uh, yes, it's been made public. It's about public perception. It's been made public. Some have said they're going, they're going to court. But do you think such a poll coming at such a time has a potential to affect anyone's political ambitions? Well, knowing uh, how Kenyans um, uh, sometimes glorify those with the wealth, irrespective of where the wealth came from, mm -hmm. I don't see this as being damaging to uh, even the politicians that have been mentioned. Mm -hmm. It is too far away from the uh, next elections. And uh, even if it was to be taken as propaganda, those of us who are in politics, we know that propaganda is only effective at uh, the last minute where when, when uh, mm -hmm. uh, it can have some damaging effect. If such a poll was to be released closer to the election? Clo closer to the election, maybe it could influence perceptions. But then again, remember that our politics has been very uh, ethnicized. So it is not about the quality or the caliber of the persons before us. It is mostly about the interests that they represent and the interests mm -hmm. that they serve. In fact, this kind of report, in, in my thinking, it can help to galvanize support mm -hmm. for persons who have already declared their ambitions for 2022. Mm -hmm. It will galvanize support in this manner. Over the weekend, you will find people at prayer rallies yes. and uh, funeral meetings <laughs> saying that our son is being targeted yes. unfairly. Wameona tunaenda kuwa raisi. Sasa wameingilia imaneno. And there will be a lot of bashing for Ipsos. There will be a lot of bashing for Tom Wolf. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, reference even to his uh, ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, all that will not be useful, but the intention will be to fortify and to consolidate support around the big men. So this, to me, yes. is not going to be uh, damaging. However, if uh, these persons are smart, then also their, their peer departments must then start looking at that as a threat uh, to the, to, to, to the long-term viability mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of, of their political prospects. And they must start uh, spinning things that then will uh, divert attention from corruption and, and, and will uh, reveal the other things that they are doing. For example, Waiguru, the ghosts of NYS have refused mm -hmm. to leave her. Mm -hmm. Even <laughs> if she is going to uh, make uh, <coughs> County Kirenyaga 24-hour economy, uh, no one will see that. People will still be seeing the weaknesses of NYS. Mm -hmm. uh, William Ruto, the, the issues of land, the issues of uh, allegations of corruption have followed him. But there's no denying that William Ruto is uh, also some very talented uh, or very gifted uh, person. Mm -hmm. uh, despite his, uh, his, 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 his problems of perception and problems of uh, integrity, you cannot deny that he's a man with energy. In fact, if his energy was directed towards good things, then he could be a very good leader. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that people feel that his energy has been directed uh, yes. towards uh, the wrong side of, uh, of the stick. If, if at all it was your name on the front page of the Daily Nation uh, yeah. today and <coughs> talking about that uh, kind of perception yeah. on your person, uh, would you find such a poll useful to yourself? Well, or, uh, uh, is it something you dismiss and quickly rush to court and say, I'm going to challenge it in court? You see, Fr Fred... Uh, As a politician. Uh, uh, the, 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 the truth is that, um, yes, the damage may not... Uh, be, be be so uh, huge neither may, may, it may not be so sustained but, but at the end of the day uh, I think it's important to say that it's not a good thing it's not a good thing uh, you know it's, it's not good for for, for, for for the name of our, for, for our politicians or for, for anyone and, and and that's why I think more caution would have to be you know to be to be urged and I think also uh, the, the you know, the, the push or, or probably the, the decision that the law must be followed, you know, in this, as, as Bonnie says, that there exists a law. Because, you see, it is, I, I don't think it's, to, it, it's safe to just assume that um, you can just go and run a poll and, uh, and, and say things about people. And you see, as, as you've said, you know, perception is not reality. And, and so, uh, in my view, I think there has to be more responsibility, you know, being... Uh, 
taken by, by those who conduct polls, especially in this country. Because, you know, for example, ask yourself, how much <laughs> does one invest in a political career? It's a, it's a lot. You get to do a lot of things, I mean, to, to, to reach the level to which you have, you have reached. For example, look at the two individuals, uh, you know, uh, Anwe Guru as a governor, and more so William uh, Ruto as the deputy president and as an aspirant for, for, for the presidency. And, and, you know, I can tell you for sure, that, for example, for, for the deputy president to get where he is, I mean, he is hard to work uh, around the clock 24-7 mm -hmm. and, 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 and to, to climb to, to, to the ladder where he is with his aspirations. And so I, I believe there has to be some sense of more responsibility such that when, when you're going to come up with that kind of report, then come up with the report, but it has got to have some, some, some more credibility to it. Otherwise, you know, if you just aim a gun at the reputation of people that were using the poll, uh, you may inflict minimum damage, but mm -hmm. continuously it would be, it, it, it's not good for the name. Okay. No, for, for, for uh, the our, our time for the news review is up this morning, but uh, the other big headline has to do with the uh, communication with the governor of Nairobi. Uh, and how you should conduct yourself. Probably you can handle, uh, you can tackle that as you make your final remarks. Plus, uh, it would not be fair to our audience uh, to let you leave studio without talking about uh, this issue of Luya unity, uh, which uh, seems always to be qualified by the word elusive, uh, because there's a new push uh, by leaders from that area. Some have said, including Governor Oparanya, that he's even ready to quit his position in ODM uh, for the sake of Luya unity, and uh, this push to have all the parties uh, from that region dissolve and to form one uh, united front. Uh, is this something you, uh, you subscribe to? Uh, that uh, plus how different is this push this time round as you make your final uh, remarks? Hey, that cannot be a final remark. It is. You made a final remark and then you, you've asked very many questions. <laughs> no, it's but I think, I, I think it's the latest, let me speak to the, the latest. Mm -hmm. The latest being the, the luncheon we had mm -hmm. uh, at a Nairobi hotel, uh, of, I think day before yesterday. Uh, it shouldn't worry anybody. And I remember I tweeted that uh, we were r relieving the ground that had been broken by Michael Kijano Amadwa. Mm -hmm. And uh, people quickly thought I was talking about politics. Wamadwa achieved fresh political, economic, and social ground for our community. So because we are in Kitale today, to go and celebrate him, we thought we precede this, uh, this event by that particular luncheon. Mm -hmm. So it was not a question of uh, pushing for real unity per se. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's no such push uh, currently as we speak, uh, despite the comments and remarks attributed to leaders at that event? N what is there now, and uh, which uh, has political sense, is the efforts we are making uh, to try and merge the strongest political, national political parties that are Mm -hmm. in our region that is ANC and Fort Kenya. Just those two parties? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and if in the process mm -hmm. it is becoming uh, sufficiently attractive mm -hmm. for the deputy party leader of the Orange mm -hmm. Democratic uh, Movement, mm -hmm. uh, Wetangu, uh, not Wetangula, Oparanya, uh -huh. uh, to run and come where we are, he's most welcome. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I know Bonnie knows this, uh, whatever is happening in Uganda right now, uh, with the Bobby Wine uh, issue, you remember it started with this social media mm -hmm. tax, and it has a deep implication on cost of living. In Kenya, we've got a tax to be introduced on petroleum products. In Kenya, the Ipsos survey shows that Kenyans feel that we're in the wrong direction mm -hmm. because of high cost of living. In Kenya, the sugar industry it's, is on its knees. And I want to urge uh, Boni that uh, as you talk about the unity of politicians and people who've been uh, in the political stage for too long, also have a thought for the cost of living, for the industries that underpin yeah. those areas, because that is the uh, unifying factor. Mm -hmm. It is not that Oparanya and Kaluale have decided to sit together. It is that they are sitting together to talk about the industry and issues of cost of mm -hmm. living. Now, um, you, I, <laughs> the, the, the Sonko issue I don't want to talk about. Uh, Sonko was our colleague in the Senate, and uh, I think in the Senate, uh, more often than not, he behaved himself well. 
Uh, he told <laughs> me when he went out uh, <laughs> to his constituents that he, <coughs> he was a different person. But uh, you can see it has earned him uh, a position as the governor of the most powerful uh, city mm -hmm. in East and Central Africa. Looks like it works for him. What we want him to do is to be more steadfast about uh, the corrupt in Nairobi. And the Rwaraka matter that we were looking into mm -hmm. uh, has an implication on Governor Sonko's legacy because the schools that we were investigating are schools that were previously owned by Nairobi City mm -hmm. Council. So you should be on the lookout for land grabbers and thieves who want to take advantage of the transition to devolved government's window to uh, b b cash in or to disappear with public funds. Okay. And finally, I want to give the uh, nation an assurance that Senate and the committee that I chair is committed to making sure that the children who go to Rwaraka High School and drive in primary school are not used as pawns by people who are intent on enriching themselves illegally. And this matter is now before the Senate, and we hope that Senate, being the upper house, is going to demonstrate good temperament mm -hmm. and that the report that we have submitted will be adopted. And after that, we also expect the DCI and the ESEC and the DPP to conclude this matter because it has been open for too long and the longer it stays open, the more accusations and counter accusations that are going to emerge, mm -hmm. uh, trying to paint everyone as uh, complicit in the matter. Okay, thank you. Finally, Senator Amatangi. Yes, it looks like today's final comments is a wrap up of really what is happening. I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, mean, I, I, I would want to, to start by where uh, you know, my colleague, uh, Senator Kajon, has, has please, 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 you know, sure finished well. with. And uh, quickly, you know, really to urge, uh, you know, the, the history of, of that Walaka land issue, uh, Fred, is such is so long such that actually by now, cumulatively, more than 10 billion has been paid for that piece of land. And, and that, that, is, that is what I would want to urge the authorities as they look at that report once it's adapted. You know, to, to broaden it and, and see f since 1998, how is it that one person has continued to benefit from this land being compensated uh, multiple times over the same land by different agencies of government who has been the cumulative beneficiaries of, of, of such, a, such a scandal? Because remember, this country was up in fire in arms during the Golden Bug scandal of, of I think two or three billion. Now this is 10 billion gone and more claims you saw in yesterday's press that actually there was a claim of about 23 billion of by the same guy over the same land to governor kidero when he was sitting so this this circus may not end soon now secondly on um, what you spoke about Songo, and i want to uh, to to congratulate Songo because especially when he appeared before the public accounts committee on this Ruaraka land issue, he was very forthright and very firm. He came up with documents, and and uh, I think I think he did a good job. Yesterday, I saw him. I, I saw a report <laughs> where there was a windy who was uh, arms raised up. I think had gone to take some five million to him somewhere. I, you know, it was in the press yesterday, <laughs> and, uh, and and I think anyway, <laughs> you know, the, the guy is setting a different pace for for how he wants the city to look like in his own way, in his own style. Uh, but but you know, finally. Maybe it's working. And then lastly, uh, Fred, I think uh, as we spoke about that, um, uh, the headlines on the Ipso Ipsos uh, poll, it, uh, I would want to say, as I've said, that I don't think it is it's a mean, it, 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 it's really allowable that you just take the names of, of people who have invested in their names and careers okay. and then play ping pong with it and just toss their names around, you know, mm -hmm. with, with polls that okay. are potentially damaging. I think that's, that's it. And lastly is on this, uh, the handshake. It is here in the... In the yes, in the but we have no time and to and and, and, we, and we never spoke <laughs> about <laughs> 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 but, 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 but most important <coughs> about this handshake is what the president said. Okay. Uh, that, that uh, you know, hopefully that this country can finally reap benefit out of this uh, okay. handshake and, and, and give it uh, value. You okay. know, for, for what it's meant to be. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator Amatangi. You wanted to say something about yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, about yeah, seconds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can see in today's paper, the standard page nine, the governors from Lake Basin are proposing that uh, the distance, the radius around mm -hmm. Azuk, uh, a, a sugar factory should be a minimum of 40 kilometers. That's a, a new zoning level? Yes, yeah, zoning. Mm -hmm. Members of the public must know this is extremely dangerous, and uh, Kajuang, you're here. This means because of Mumias, which, uh, which is around 
30 something kilometers away from West Kenya and Utali which is 12 kilometers from uh, West Kenya it means if this misguided view was implemented of zoning West Kenya and uh, and Utali sugar company would have to close down okay. Okay. that is not acceptable wow. you can't close down factories in western province when pan paper is gone the year is gone Mumias is gone now you want to close down the re the only remaining two wow. butali and west it, it should be on the agenda uh -huh. when you go to kitale and, and i encourage that conversation boni because uh, it also has an implication on my county exactly so le le it, it would be important that we discuss these issues uh, they are the real things that bring kenyans together yes. and, and, and definitely the senate is sitting in is, yes. sitting is senate is holding a sitting outside in uh, outside yeah. parliament okay. in was in gishu okay. Yes. Your counties are invited for the sitting outside. These okay. are some of the important issues that you can come and we discuss with all the counties. Actually, Kamega is one of the has had that. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. So please that come and uh, sitting, come and do a special sitting of the Senate outside yeah. uh, the Houses of Parliament in Wasim Gishu. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for that. Very many headlines that we could go on and on. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you wanted to comment on the hashtag Free Bobby Wine uh, because it's also trending. And even members can, of the National Assembly now are saying they're going to buy air tickets to go and carry out a protest in Kampala, uh, whether or not they are that committed to other issues that affect Kenyans right here, uh, that's a different question altogether. Moses Kajuang, Senator Homa Bay, Kimani Wamatangi, Senator Kiambu, and Boni Haloli, Deputy Party Leader, Fort Kenya. Thank you so much for helping us look at the issues behind the headlines.